everybody's afraid of what Twitter is going to say about them, what Facebook's going to say about them, what the preteens and the new teens and the e-teens and the a-teens and everybody's teen is going to say about them. But that roast, that roast was a bunch of people who said, yo, we're going to get together and f it. If you own this stage, you get in these jokes. And I loved it. Let's start from the beginning. Though. Let's start with the host. Let's start with the man of the hour. Kevin Hart, man. Kevin Hart nailed his job as a host because as a host, not only are you supposed to set the tone, right? Set the stage for what the energy is going to be like for this whole two hour experience, but you've got to maintain it throughout two hours. That's a long ass time to keep people laughing. Kevin Hart did such a good job. One setting the tone, man. His jokes, like I said, when he came in and started talking about how the fuck did Tom Brady not notice that his wife was taking eight karate classes a day and he was just allowing that shit to go on? Then he says something like, yo, your wife's getting her ass, like, clapped. He said her, he, his wife was getting her ass clapped, which is why I think we've also got to start with this. You can't have something like this work unless everybody's on the same page that we're going to say some things that offend and hurt, but they are jokes. They are not meant to actually be personal attacks. Outside of like one weird occurrence with Jeff Ross and Tom Brady that, I mean, Jeff came out later and said that it was a joke and it was part of the show where Jeff had basically made a comment about Robert Kraft and saying that Robert Kraft had the allegations of Robert Kraft being in a uh, massage parlor and having been, it wasn't even an allegation, right? He was actually caught on camera in a massage parlor getting his uh, his, his Jimmy rub, getting his, uh, his shimmy tucked. You know what I'm saying? Uh, getting some pleasure time from the masseuses in the spa. Doing some things that our boy Deshaun Watson would be very familiar with. The point is, he was caught on camera, but, you know, the allegations were thrown out. He was taken to court, but those it was thrown out because of a technicality. Basically, it was a lot of talk for, I'm rich as fuck, I'm a billionaire, throw that shit out. And they did. So Jeff Ross made a joke about that. It wasn't even that funny a joke. It was something about, like, um, Tom Brady showing up the first day, saying, I'm the best damn decision you've ever made, Mr. Kraft. Also, would you like a massage? That was the joke. And then Tom Brady stood up and then you could, I don't know if it was a hot mic. I don't know if somebody just happened to catch it or they wanted you to capture it. This is what happens when you have a live event. But Tom Brady told him that, you know, don't say that shit again. But he didn't say it in a joking manner. Like when I watched it live, it felt like he was saying it um, with some gravitas, with some, I'm fucking Tom Brady and I'm telling you, Jeff Ross, don't make that joke again. But you could see how Robert Kraft, the billionaire who literally changed Tom's life, right? Gave him the contract, the career, the money, the longevity, plus who knows what kind of relationship they had behind the scenes outside of football. He'd be very protective of that individual. Plus, we don't know what the deal was when it came to agreeing to Mr. Kraft being there. I, I called him Mr. Kraft like I know this man. The point is, he could have had something in his contract that said, yo, I'll show up to this event, right? Because it's going to be a big deal to have me there, Belichick there, and Tom there. But the jokes can only go so far with me. I'm not up on that stage with y'all, so y'all better keep it here. The really dope thing that I also thought Kevin Hart did is you could tell not all of his stuff was written, which again, as the host, you gotta be fluid. You gotta be able to rack to the moment, especially when you've got other comedians like an Andrew Schultz or a Nikki Glacier who are up there and they're killing it. You gotta be able to go up on the stage after them, take what they said, reference it, and keep the show flowing by like attacking them based off what they said about other people. But he never outshone talent of the individuals who came up on the stage. So even though he could take the joke and flip it and throw it back at the person, he never made you feel like this is all about Kevin Hart. Also, we gotta give shouts out to the man because he just won a Mark Twain Award for humor. Huge deal. I don't know how many comedians have done that. We probably looked it up. Actually, I want to look it up right now. How many comedians have won that award? Because that just seems like a, a really big deal that should be getting way more press. Oh, you know what? As I'm, I'm typing it, the one I'm thinking of, I think Dave Chappelle won recently. I, I just saw Richard Pryor's name on there. Yep, Richard Pryor, Jonathan Winters. I don't know him. Carl Rayner. I feel like I've heard the name. Whoopi Goldberg, Bob Newhart. Tina Fey, Will Ferrell. Okay, it's a lot of comedians. Okay, how many black comedians? Let's narrow it down because a lot of comedians have won this thing. Richard Pryor, Whoopi Goldberg, Bill Cosby. We're at three so far. Eddie Murphy, that's four. Kevin Hart. Oh, no, I almost missed Dave Chappelle. So you got six. So after Kevin Hart does this thing, we move on to uh, Jeff Ross, who's the, the roast general, which I really don't understand this dynamic where you have a host and a roast general. Like, it feels like the roast general should also be the host. This should just be your, your, your starting... You're starting batter, right? Your big hitter coming up, man, and not, you know, set the tone for the comedians 
that's what I thought. But it felt more like they were kind of like co-hosting, sort of. But 98% of it was Kevin Hart and 2% of it was Jeff Ross. It was weird. I didn't understand that whole dynamic. Maybe it's just because Jeff Ross has been associated with roast since the beginning of roast. You get Jeff Ross, who has he has his moments, but for the most part, I, I kind of moved off Jeff Ross. I didn't think he was that funny, though he did continue the trend, which is important, of nobody's safe, no joke is too far. He did a really good job of doing that, and he was probably one of the first ones outside of the Kevin Hart joke about <laughs> Giselle getting fucked by the karate master and only being a white belt, which was still crazy to say it out loud when the man is sitting right there. Love that. Then you get Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe was actually funnier than I thought it was going to be. He set the stage, I think, really well in in showing that you don't have to necessarily worry about the former football players and what they were going to be delivering. It wasn't going to be safe jokes either. They also were going to go at Tom pretty damn hard. And I think Drew, I mean, out of everybody, probably has the most reason to go at Tom pretty hard. And I thought for an individual who doesn't do comedy, he actually makes you laugh a good, a good bit. Like, he does... um. He reminds me of James Bond was to tell jokes. That's who that's what you get. Cause he's a very kind of poised, stoic, rigid individual, sets up a joke, tells the punchline in a very kind of matter of fact way. Every once in a while he'll drop some inflection in or, or do some animated uh movements, but for the most part, it's kind of set up joke punchline. And they're pretty clever, they're pretty creative, they'll make you chuckle. I think the joke with um remembering whether what it was like being on stage in the first round and pointing to Willie McGinnis and pointing to um uh, Randy Moss and then you know kind of let it hang there because Tom Brady obviously wasn't drafted in the fir first round was a pretty funny joke and for somebody who literally lost his job partially some of like what of could have been a, a better future to this man to go up on that stage and hold your own tell jokes but then like also come from a place of like of of love and respect shake hands you just gotta have hats off to everybody who went on this stage. One of the funniest things also that Kevin Hart breaks up, uh, brings up during this moment is how if you zoom in on Tom Brady's lips, right, his bottom lip, as people are telling jokes, you can tell he's nervous because his lip is shaking and they actually zoom in for reaction shot and you can see this man's lip actually shaking. Like there's a tremble in his lip. Who knows if it's from nervous men or for whatever the hell they got going on in here, whatever injections he's got going in here, but that lip is moving. But the best comes next. By far, best comedian of the night. Nobody comes close. Absolutely kills it. And I wasn't expecting it because I didn't even know who the hell this person was. And Nikki Glacier kill. I mean, crush that night. Easily the funniest person on that stage. Had a joke for everybody. And each of them was straight to the gut. Knock your breath out funny. Like, and I'm talking about that the person, like that person that she was going at. They was getting punched in the gut while they was like, oh, holy shit, I can't believe she just hit me like that. They was laughing too. She made a joke about a gang grog being dumb, which I did not know people thought this man was so damn dumb. But she talked about how Tom Brady invested that whole money in cryptocurrency and lost it. And she was like, even Gronk realized like that was a bad idea. He was like, I know not real money. Yo, the shit was so good. Kevin Hart came back up, told the joke again and was laughing because she nailed it. She was self-deprecating. She talked about how <laughs> She had a boyfriend in the audience, despite what people believe about her. Again, I didn't know who the hell she was. It's long term, loves him, but would shoot his ass in the face for a chance to fuck Tom Brady. Love it. And it was delivered in such a like genuine humility way where it was like she brought you in her comedy world, beat your ass up and threw you out. Standing ovation is what she ended up getting and it should have been even longer. Like they should have just did a whole five minute cut on people just clapping because she was the best comedian of the night. If you've not watched this, I think you should watch Nikki Glacier's spot alone. Just watch that, just laugh at that. Maybe get the setup from Kevin Hart so you know what you're coming into and then watch Nikki Glacier. She even said some shit about Aaron Hernandez, something about like Tom Brady has rings. Gronk has, Drew Bledsoe even has rings. Hell, Aaron Hernandez has a ring. Like, oh my God, like bro, her shit was so biting, so cutting. Again, you're looking around like, is it okay to even laugh at what the hell is happening right now? She talks about Giselle and says the stupidest shit that Tom Brady did was tell, hey babe, you should, um, you should take jujitsu. Brilliant joke. Brilliant fucking joke delivered in the smartest way, man. Like I'm a fan. I'm immediately a fan, and I want to go look up her other stand-up specials. I hope that was a taste of what else she's got out there because she was incredible. So after Nikki, I feel bad for this guy. I don't know why they set it up like this. Probably because they didn't know Kiki, Nikki was gonna kill like this. But Randy Moss gets the unfortunate pleasure of having to follow up Nikki, and I think Kevin Hart does his best to try and soften the blow between the two. Because even him, as a comedian, as an individual who knows the job of an opener all the way to a closer, 
He's got to know that that's a hard ass act to follow up. And now I'm about to put a pro football player, a pro football player from West Virginia up on the stage to follow that up, man. And I was rooting for him. I was like, please let this black brother go up there and tell some killer jokes. Randy was fine. Randy is what I expected a pro football player to be like when he delivers jokes on a stage in front of thousands of people, knowing that millions of eyes are watching. He had some randy's issue for me one was that he, he seemed like he wasn't yet confident in himself it seemed like he was still trying to figure out what his rhythm was going to be for the jokes and two the jokes were a little bit shaky themselves too much focus on the football not enough to make the audience relate to what was being said on top of that who the fuck dressed randy you can't be on stage basically looking like a school bus driver is all i'm saying Anyway, he had, I think, one joke that made me laugh, and he was talking about the rings and how everybody on that stage pretty much has a ring. Drew Bledsoe, who was in a hospital, got a damn ring. Randy Moss, arguably the greatest receiver of all time, if not top three of the greatest receiver of all time, does not have a ring. He, named, he mentioned a name, some dude named Nate Ebner, and was like, even Nate Ebner has a ring, Brady. Who the f*** is Nate Ebner? The way he delivered that line, the way he brought it, that was funny. That was Randy finding his comfort zone. The one moment where I was like, <laughs> got him. And then after that, it, it was pretty much done. And Randy pretty much gave his thanks and, and moved off the stage, which, like I said, following up Nikki is hard. Following up Nikki not being a professional comedian is even harder. Following up Nikki not being a professional comedian, being a pro football player and nervous is the hardest thing to do. So hats off for that guy to go on, for going up there anyway and still telling his damn joke. Then we switch back to Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart has the honor to introduce Kim Kardashian. This was another thing that caught my eye that made me want to watch this because apparently when Kim Kardashian went up, something happened. And that was she got booed. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not the hugest fan of Kardashian, Kardashian left, Kardashian right, Kardashian up, Kardashian down, Jenner, whatever. The whole tribe group, I never understood the, I never understood it. Kid, adult, teen, whatever. Never got why they were famous. I didn't understand the talent. I didn't understand the obsession. I've never seen the shows. However, one thing I do give to that family is the hustle. I've never knocked the hustle. That's got to be one of the most brilliant marketing, promo, branding, individual group of people of all time. So you can get mad at what they do. You can get mad that you don't have it, but you can't get mad that they get at the money. That I do respect. And I respect that Kim got up on that stage even after being booed and told some jokes. And the jokes weren't bad. Like, say what you want about it. There were some funny jokes in there. There were some jokes in there that made you go, ha. Again, really good at self-deprecating humor. She was the other individual who was able to recognize what she was going to be made fun of, turning that, doing an Eminem flip, telling the jokes first. And she took some pretty good uh, digs at the individual's on the stage as well I, they weren't the funniest jokes but i think that's also going back to some individuals have a delivery and a timing they know how to structure a joke tell the joke at a proper time to make it ring in your ear to make you want to laugh nikki uh, not nikki um well nikki does a really great job at that kim that's just not her forte the jokes don't ring off um as authentic so they don't hit at the right time to make you want to laugh with her but they are funny jokes just probably need to be told by a different person I'm not mad at Kim. I am interested in the fact that Netflix has been accused of removing the boos after the fact to go back into your live production that you've touted is live unedited and then put it on your platform and be like, it's unedited. But except for that one part where Kim got booed, we, we, we took that up to me again. Uh, that's a flex on the Kardashian family and just shows you how much power them individuals got because if they don't like some. They changing it and Netflix ain't changing it for nobody. You telling me Netflix who's going up against Hulu, HBO Max and Disney Plus is afraid of the Kardashians? Yo, that's a different kind of power. So after that, after Kevin does his little thing, this is where I, I keep talking about how it gets weird between the general and the host, how it feels like the host and the general should be the same person, but Jeff Ross kind of takes over and he does a little bit of, um, what is it, crowd works. He's in the crowd and he's making joke about jokes about people that are in the uh, audience, which some of them hit, some of them don't. I think a lot of it doesn't hit because it's like, who the fuck are you making a joke on? Who are these people that are in the in the, in the audience that you're, you're talking about? And then there's like a love on the spectrum joke. I, I don't know if that's targeted towards Netflix because they do a lot of reality shows with different premises and obviously Netflix is hosting it. The point is you can skip past this part. There's nothing here to really see a laugh at. Okay, so the next individuals that come up are Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura. This one, this one had me check my phone. This is the one that made me start scrolling through social media. Um, I've seen Burt do his famous story of um, uh, I am the machine that famous joke which I think Nikki re references when she's like I love your joke outside of that I don't really know his comedy Tom Segura I think I know from his podcast I don't know if they do a podcast together but I swear I've seen him do a podcast this bit whatever this was where 
they stood up together and did like a PowerPoint presentation mocking Tom Brady just did not work for me for some reason. Like I just, I don't know if it's because they were very stiff and they were standing up there. And these are two individuals who've been on stage, been in front of thousands of people that you would think would be more loose and comfortable in front of the crowd. But that monitor has them focused in one one moment and it just comes off very nervous. It comes off very like, this is my safe spot. And as long as I stay in this safe spot, I'm going to be okay. And the jokes just... I don't think any of the jokes hit at all. I just, I don't understand it. They do something where there was like, maybe even the intro premise where it was like, white white males don't have a day. Funny premise, I get where you're going with that. It fell flat for me, because then they start talking about like, they took everything. They put up Serena Williams taking tennis. They put up, um, uh, what's old boy's name? Why can't I remember? The greatest golfer of all time. Uh, Tiger Woods golfing. And then they put up a, a picture of a bunch of Dominicans and uh, Latin and uh, Hispanics individuals who are in baseball. And then Tom does a joke in Spanish. Kind of reminds me of like when Tommy, uh, was it Tommy Davidson? Used to do his joke like El Segundo. He would do a whole bit where he would talk about like watching Spanish television. But he would do the whole joke in Spanish. So how the hell can an English audience laugh at it? Because it's in Spanish. The hilarity should be in that he's doing Spanish and he's doing it rapido. It's just not funny because you don't know what the fuck he's saying. It was kind of similar to that where he does something in Spanish and you're just like, what? What is the point of this? Are, we, are we supposed to laugh at the fact that America is diversified now? There's a minor bit where they put Tom Brady up in a compromising position with a football and he's kind of holding it like a baby. And they're just like, the funniest bit in that is that Bert is losing it as he's like, look at this fucking photo. Like, who takes this photo? This is the first time, too. I've never given any thoughts to what Tom Brady's sexual orientation is. There are so many references, especially starting here about Tom Brady being gay that I just didn't even know was a thing. Like, I didn't know Gronk was considered being dumb. I didn't know Brady was considered being gay. This photo and this 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 whole thing was the first moment I was like, wait, is this man gay? Like, are, is there something that y'all are revealing right now that I just, I'm just being privy to? That was about all I got from this. The rest of this, I was just like, you just, this, this sucks. Oh, that's right. The other thing that they do is a serial killer, but they talk about how Tom has traits similar to a serial killer, but it leads nowhere except to say that Tom is a fucking psycho and they don't want to be killed by him. They start putting up real serial killers, Ted Bundy and, and Jeffrey Dahmer and just and just weird individuals. And you're just like, where is this? Why is this a bit right now? How is this funny? Lo and behold, who walks out? You would think Will Ferrell. Nope. Will Ferrell as Ron Burgundy. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I'm a fan of the Anchor Man movies because the truth is I haven't watched them. I've seen one clip, and it's the clip where they do the whole fight scene between the anchors and Will Swift shows up as a uh, sports reporter, and I think that's the only reason I haven't watched that clip. Jeff Bullington, ESPN All Sports. Tonight's play of the day is me extracting your spine from your dead body. Holy shit, there's a lot of news. The thing about it, though... I'm excited because I'm like, if anybody can bring us back up to that Nikki level, it's got to be Will Ferrell, right? Because although a lot of his movies don't necessarily hit for me, like I like his drama movies more than I like his comedy movies. The rumors from those that I do respect in the comedy game is that he's a naturally funny individual. I think even Kevin Hart at one point said that the funniest person he's ever worked with is Will Ferrell. So I'm sitting up in the bed. I got the TV turned up. Like, let me hear what Ron Burgundy is about to bring to the game. Turn it back up in here. Let's get some raw jokes off. Let's talk about Giselle's wife getting fucked by the karate master. 15 minutes of Ron Burgundy hitting on Tom Brady is what we get. He talks about him having golden skin and he's like, God, damn, you're beautiful. He's like, you might see it on television that he's gorgeous, but you just, when you're up close to it, it's something different. And that's what Ron Burgundy is up there talking about. You can only do that bit for so long before you're like, you want to take him home after this show? <sighs> maybe I, maybe Will Ferrell is just not for me. Maybe that's just not my cup of tea. So we move off of Will Ferrell. Bill Belichick walks out on the stage, though, and he's got a good long set, pretty good long set. And if we think football players are stoic and, and dry and probably the worst people to tell a joke, I really think a football coach, especially Bill Belichick, has got to be the driest, worst person to tell a football joke. This has got to be worse than sitting in detention listening to your teacher tell jokes. But surprisingly, Bill Belichick, not that bad. He again also has a dry sense of humor. He's got the setup and the delivery and it's very straightforward and there's no real animation to it. Actually, every once in a while his eyebrow ditches and it's just enough to make you go like, hey, that was pretty funny, Bill. Um, but I, I mean, his is the first thing that I see that like feels written, but it's okay because he delivers it in an authentic way to himself and it works. He's got a pretty good joke about, you know, being a life coach and basically saying that, um, <laughs> telling people that you got to say no. And he's like, when he saw Gronkowski had done a uh, commercial for Tide Pods, he basically made a joke that Gronkowski only does, does commercials of things that he eats. And then he brings up Tide Pods. 
and he's like that commercial I use to my actual players and I play and tell them that it's okay in life to say no to things and then he's like this is the same advice that Kevin's manager fails to tell him that made me laugh that was a good joke made Kevin Hart double over so hey well done coach and you know sometimes these jokes work just because it's who telling them so sometimes it's not because the quality of joke is good it's because the individual that's telling them is so out of place for the joke that it becomes funny so next that we got Julius Edelman I don't remember much from his speeches will accept that his was his was good jokes told poorly Julius had okay jokes that had been told by like a Kevin Hart or somebody who like mashed the craft of delivering a joke probably could have been funny but not this football player. It, it's funny for a locker room. This is an individual that reminds you of a football locker room or if you've been in the military or just where a bunch of guys are being guys and telling crude jokes that hit hard. There's no cushioning to them. There's no softening you up. There's no bringing you on the roller coaster. It's I know what you did. I know what you what's jacked up about you. And I'm going to tell you in a funny way. That's only funny if we're boys like that. This dude up here, he just goes like, you're so black. It, you're like blacker than Burt Kreischer, uh, Kreischer's liver. And his liver is so black. It's been on Shannon Sharp's podcast. And it's like, it's funny. There's no denying that that's funny. But damn, you told it in such a fucking like, get the pickup truck, get your sheets ready, cut holes in it way. Like I, I can even remember a moment where he, they like he brings up Gronk's Gronk's dick, and again this could be funny, the way you tell it it could be a funny setup, but he's just like people always ask me how big it is. Well, let me tell you, gets the job done. What the wait? What Edelman? What what are you saying? What what's the premise of this joke? Are you up here telling the joke? Or are you telling us about your Saturday night? Okay, so now we're going to move on to, again, Kevin Hart doing his thing, referencing jokes, bringing it back, progressing us forward. But he tosses it to Tony Hitchcliffe, Hitchcliffe, Hitch, Hillcliffe, Hitchcliffe. I should learn these people's names. He's got the, he's the host of Kill Tommy, which I've seen a bunch of clips from. I love it. It's a bunch of comedians up on stage. They're basically roasting each other. It's super funny. I've never heard Tommy actually tell jokes. I've heard him come back with zingers every once in a while, but I've never seen him do a set. Starts off on the table. And then from the table, makes his way to the stage. And when I say Tommy, Tommy, bro, he fires off so many jokes so rapidly. At first, it comes off almost as nervous energy. You're like, oh, he's just trying to fly through these jokes because the first ones weren't really hitting and he's trying to get it over with. No, that's just how this man's mind works. And eventually, he's in a stride where it's just like, boom, gut punch, boom, gut punch, boom, 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 gut punch. And they all hit and they're all tearing up everybody. Pure, funny energy and they weren't safe jokes either these were jokes that were going at people in a raw way that again had you sit up in your seats like it's okay to laugh at this right like i'm not gonna get in trouble nobody feel me when i laugh at this jeff nikki sam j andrew schultz brett tom everybody gets it and it's just back to back to you just gotta watch that set because i don't even want to do it injustice by trying to remember everything that he says and how he says it but everybody gets a very powerful punch whatever it is they specialize in even if it's like the most minute individual who doesn't have that much background where you're like there's no way i could laugh at any of this he finds something to destroy them with and he does it so well that the people he's making fun of, and I love this, when a comedian is great, only a great comedian can do this, he makes fun of you and you laugh with him. The people that he's making fun of, at one point, at one point Andrew Schultz just got dissed for whatever he got dissed for, and he's up on his feet and he's kicking. Bro, when you start touching another man with your foot, not your hand, your foot, yo, he's, he's dug into a different bag. He's made you laugh from a party you didn't even know you could touch. It's like the first time you got your taint touched and you was like, I didn't even know that that felt like that. That's what that joke did to him. Tommy's last roast of those five individuals puts him slightly above Nikki. That's how good that was. Can't even speak. Okay, so we're finally starting to wind down our final performances. Next, we have Rob Gronkowski, which I was looking forward to because we know Rob as a party guy for one. So I thought he was going to bring the energy. Even if his joke sucked, he was going to have the charisma, the mannerisms of like a Marlon Wayne. Um, uh, who else used to be really big on moving? A Cat Williams back in his day. Um, Chris Tucker from his one little uh, sketch. M people who like use the whole stage to move. It wasn't really his bag. And also I can understand this isn't really the event for it. He had he had jokes. There were definitely jokes. And, and, and he did a really good job of playing off the whole dumb thing. Like, he did a really good job of working that back in and constantly referring to, like, I wrote that myself whenever he made a joke that was kind of dumb, didn't really hit. That was really well done. So he had very good situational awareness of how to make a joke funny. I also think he 
benefits from who he is and the the reputation and legacy that he's built because even the jokes that didn't work still got last because everybody's like it's just like when you see your boy that like you just got fond memories of you always have good times with every time he's every time he's around there's positive energy you just enjoy being around that guy it doesn't necessarily matter what he says or the quality of how he says it because it's him so you're gonna laugh you're gonna have a good time with it i felt like that was a lot of his jokes because some of his stuff like he does one joke when he talks about like Oh, man. He talks about how how Tom Brady gave Bill Belichick the shaft when he left uh, the Patriots and went down to Tampa and won a Super Bowl. And he was like, you gave you gave Belichick the shaft all the way from Florida. That's a thirteen hundred mile dick. And Julian Edelman Edelman sucked all of it. And it was it got super aggressive gay. And it was like it was uncomfortable in in the wrong hands. Like if Edelman had made the joke, you'd be like, man, this is just too damn far. Because, again, Edelman's got that very brash delivery Gronk did just enough of kind of like I hate to say it but like I'm dumb Gronk that you laughed at it but I love this because this is again when Kevin Hart comes to shine like I said it was a little bit shaky if it wasn't Gronk it would have failed but it was Gronk so it worked Kevin I think Kevin's just up there and he's like yo Gronk uh (laughs) Gronk scares me man (laughs) he's like I'm gonna say what everybody's thinking and I hope I don't get canceled for it but uh Gronk scares me. Gronk is like that white boy who just, when he gets drunk, you just don't know what the hell's going to happen, bro. He was like, I looked over at Randy, and Randy had that look that said, I'm going home. And you just, the way it was delivered and the real, and the if you've been in those situations where you've been away around the white dudes who drink and like that different side of them comes out, you know what it is and how the reaction is of people who recognize that. And they're just like, I'm going to get the fuck out of here before. Tommy has another tequila or Jason decides to have another uh, kamikaze, bro, because I know somebody's going to get punched in the face. And then you get the third star of the show, the third best individual, probably the last best of the night, Andrew Schultz, who I've been watching for a minute now. That individual has definitely been on the rise for a hot minute. I didn't realize how long he'd been in the game. That motherfucker is funny. And he's funny because he's got what this whole show is about to me. Raw jokes not pc call it how i see it straight shooter left can get it right can get it gay can get it straight can get it love dick hate dick doesn't matter everybody can get it and that's what he brings to his comedy and he's almost like the closer in this he's like the final comedian to bring all this together and he does it so masterfully well i know i said nikki was number one and then i know i said i give it to tommy andrew also might be vying for that number one spot those three individuals right there might be vying. i'm putting kevin hart out of it because he's more the host than he is the, the person who's going to be digging at you again does a great job of sharing the stage allowing the other comedians to shine those three ah, man andrew shit is again witty funny polished he's the perfect combination of a nikki and a tommy i'm gonna take the raw i'm gonna take the polish i'm gonna give it to you raw and it's gonna be funny another thing that i think uh schultz does really well is similar to gronk if the joke doesn't work he doesn't die with that joke he keeps he keeps it pushing he's gonna keep digging and he's gonna look at you and then he might even sit in awkward science and be like i don't give a damn if y'all are upset marinate in that and then we'll move on when I'm ready. He never feels like he's pressured. He never feels like he's nervous. Even if he knows he's saying something that's like towing the line or over the line, he's like, what are you going to do to stop me? Like, what, what's gonna, what, what, what can you possibly do in this moment to derail this trend? You can either get on board or get ran over by it. And I love that in a comedian. That's that raw fearlessness that somebody like a Bernie Mac, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was bringing to the stage. And I appreciated that. Dana White, he makes a joke about Dana White. And he's like, Dana White, man. He t- basically calls him a, <laughs> one of the greatest white supremacists in the world. He's found a way to take immigrants, throw them in a cage and make money off. And he's like, figure out a way for the minorities to beat each other up. Brilliant joke delivered exceptionally well dana's not even in the damn stands with everybody up top on the stage I, I innocent bystander in the audience he's getting jokes bro he made a joke about a white supremacist in a time like now and we all laughed at it that takes skill takes craft takes practice talks about randy moss talks about how randy is a civil rights fighter talks about how randy used to fight individuals in school uh gotten uh used to fight in school against racists and he was like randy you were so committed to fighting against racists that, that you refused to allow boston to get a championship love that great bit funny well executed well set up well delivered just i mean it's just somebody who's studied their craft and knows what it takes to get at a genuine laugh not a will smith laugh a genuine laugh out of somebody and then at one point kevin hart you know when he goes up to stand up he says literally (gasps) as advertised that's gotta be one of the best compliments anybody in their field can get to get to a position where somebody that's at the height of your respective field says as advertised 
your heart's got to melt. You might even drop to your knees and open your mouth. You might be that damn happy. Okay, so actually there is one more individual that I think you should see. Robert Kraft, 82-year-old billionaire, Robert Kraft, owner of the Patriots, also has a little bit of a segment. He goes up, and he's, I'm surprised. Maybe when you get a billion dollars, you're just, I don't know, you develop a humorous bone. But he delivers some pretty damn good jokes, and they were, like, relevant to what had happened in the night. So it's almost like it couldn't have been written because he was reacting to what the people had said on stage. He gives a toast. Thanks, everybody, for being there. He makes a joke about, like, a family reunion. He's finding himself trying to avoid certain people, and then he looks at Bill Belichick, and he's like, Bill, good to see you. And that was funny. That was delivered funny. It was crafted funny. It made sense. The only thing that I think killed it is that they did a reactionary shot of Bill, and he was in his typical... And that kind of killed the joke a little bit. But that was a damn good joke from 82-year-old billionaire. He also references Julius Edelman and that Julian, uh, or not Julius, Julian, Julian Edelman had made a comment earlier where he was like, the last time or the next time I thought I was going to see all these people back in a building again was going to be for Robert Kraft's funeral. That joke didn't really land. Again, he just got a brash way of saying shit. Robert, though, yo, he delivered it in a way where he turned it back on him and was like, come on, Julian, let's be honest, bro. Um, you're not going to be invited to my funeral. And it's funny. It was delivered in a funny way, which is just incredible to see from this old, old billionaire who you think would be out of touch and would not know how to relate in a humorous way. Does it really well. Also love right after this moment. Don't know if this was scripted. I have to assume it was scripted because you're not going to get a billionaire to do anything that they don't want to do. But Kevin Hart is presented as trying to facilitate a toast between Mr. Kraft and Bill Belichick, which, as we know, would be a bit um, strenuous, right? Because Bill Belichick was just fired by Robert Kraft a year ago. Brady went on to win a championship in Tampa and, well, Kraft got an 8-19 and has no quarterback. So did not end well, assumedly. Could have been great between them. We don't know what's happening in their bedrooms. They come on stage, they share a toast. It's just men and women being men and women, like standing on like, we can do this for the television. We can do this for appearances. We can we can take words. We can take jokes. And also we can be respectful enough to, to share a drink. I'm gonna keep this one short because I like Ben Affleck as an actor. I think he's a fine actor. I enjoy his movies for the most part. Um, What the hell was this? There are two individuals who screamed, this is a script written for me. Ben Affleck was one. It's crazy to see somebody who's a great actor. I think he was nominated for an Academy Award, right? Like, am I am I crazy in saying that Ben Affleck has an Academy Award? Am I? Am I wrong? Does he have an Academy Award? Best Picture, Best Original Screenplay. Okay, so he doesn't have one for acting. But somebody who's considered a pretty damn good actor. He's fucking Batman. Come off as somebody who's acting on stage. When he's reading that script, it comes off as so disingenuous that nothing being said can be found funny it's like reading the script and it's saying tell the joke okay point to the person that you tell the joke okay pause for laughter continue and that should be so natural for this guy who's been acting for so long but it just felt so stilted man this is not the individual i would have ended on the star power i can see why you want that individual but he should have been the opener if that's what you were going to open with because that was not the best bits. So we're going to move off of that. After that, also, it doesn't get any better because then Tom Brady comes up. Uh, there are certain roast or people who are getting roasted that I think that after you get roasted, you should just come up there. Say your thank yous like, yo, I enjoyed that. That was funny. Maybe one or two zingers. If you can't come up with them, have a team member, right? One or two. And just be like, yeah, I hope you all had a good night. Thank you all so much for this. And then you walk off. And that's perfect because you sat the entire night getting zinged on, uh, getting joned on, getting joked on, and took it. And people respect that. Brady's going to walk off a legend, but not because of what the hell he did in his final performance. He went up there, and again, this felt like somebody wrote a script for him, and he had no time to practice it. He was the worst actor I'm curious to see what he's going to do on broadcast television now because that shit felt so uncanny valley, like an AI machine had been given a text to read. It was just delivered in the absolute worst way. And even worse, who would have thought it would be a good idea to give him the I'm great lean into that moment after getting dogged on the entire night, but then also with an undercurrent of like, we know you're the greatest. We know you're awesome. Clearly, all these men have some kind of homosexual fantasy with you because they've all commented on how beautiful you are. I don't think you should end the night with you going up and saying like, yes, 
I am fucking beautiful. Yes, I am the greatest of all time. And you asshole sitting on this couch could never reach my level. There's a moment where he has a thing with Randy Moss and he's like, you know, how dare you come up here and ask me for a ring? Dog, I'd never give you that shit. And it just comes off. It literally came up. Dog, I'd never give you that shit. It just comes off so gross. And you're just like, I just want to, I want to be done with this. I want to be just, let's move on. That's my really, that, that, that's it. That's the end of the, um, the special. At that point, music comes on and. I think it's so funny that rap music is what the outro and intro music was. And there were so many jokes about how like, there's like no black people on the stage at all. It's like, even when you're not wanted, you're still wanted. Uh, <laughs> my final thoughts are this. I love what Netflix did here. One, I love that this is like a return to life. We know we got the big Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight coming up right now. To me, big pay-per-view events, big live events, they're just they're just not the draw anymore. There's, it's very hard to get all people to sit down at one time to watch one thing if it's not the Super Bowl or just something mega. Netflix did something here where you can you're starting to see you're starting to see their thought process. You start you're, you're starting to see how they're thinking about how they're going to bring live events and people into the living room again. So if they're revitalizing it through this platform, I just I think it could be big money, and I'm really excited to see how this moves forward. And we don't have to pay for it; it's in our normal subscription fee, so that gives you even more reason to want to tune in. Super excited, also that Netflix was ready to jump into the ledge of unedited live. Whatever happens, happens, and we're going to start that off with a roast. So we're going to not only be live and unedited, but we're going to do it with an event that is meant to insult and offend, which for a company like Netflix, who we think of as trying to be politically correct and present things as a certain type of way and steer clear of controversy, that's a bold stand and an impressive stand. And I hope they stand on that stand and I hope other people take notice and realize even if this got controversy, even if people didn't like some of the jokes that were said, the individuals that participated seemed to be fine with it and they had a good time. And if they can be fine with it, the rest of us can pull up our pants or our panties and just just get the hell over it and start laughing at this stuff again. Bring comedy back to comedy. Allow comedians to tell their jokes. That's it. That's all I got. You know what it is. You can leave whenever you're ready to leave. I'm just going to stand here, sit here, and um, I guess you can watch me sit here for whatever weird reason, you weirdo, you freak. I'm not draining a ball. So if you think that some weird stuff is about to happen at this point, like it's JLW after dark, stand no business after that's not what's going to happen. You can literally leave right now. It's, it's it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Now go. Okay, I guess I got to stop the video.